Tell me if this sounds familiar. You stumbled onto this little-known animated show on Netflix and decided to check it out. And you found yourself drawn in by all the mysteries the show drops on you right at the beginning. There are a lot of questions about the plot and the world that aren't explained. You continue on, hoping to find answers to these questions. But if anything, the story only gets more mysterious, with each answer only raising new questions, and the mysteries keep piling up and piling up until your brain starts to hurt keeping track of it all, and you get to the end and you're like, help, I need someone to explain this to me. Fortunately, that's why I'm here. The Hollow is what I like to call a mystery box story. Definition on screen. And I've dedicated myself to explaining as many of them as possible. If you have unanswered questions about the convoluted lore of a story you've just finished, then I'm the guy who can give you those answers. Then afterwards, I give each mystery box story a rating out of 10, using my 10 criteria for what makes mysteries like these fun and engaging. In this video, I'm going to attempt to give a comprehensive explanation of every mystery and question that you could possibly have about this story. So, let's solve these puzzles laid out for us, and explain The Hollow. The Hollow is a Netflix animated series from 2018 that ran for two seasons. It wasn't a huge hit. It flew pretty under the radar and got cancelled after its second season. But I really love this show. Not enough people know about it, and it's still enjoyable even though it was cut short. I know, I'm preaching to the choir here because if you're watching this, you've probably seen it already. It's a very short show, but it uses the limited runtime to pack in a ton of exciting and intriguing mystery. Alongside strong characters and fun storylines, the questions of why and how anything in the show is happening is always in the background driving things forward. I know something you don't. <laughs> I'm going to pick apart these mysteries and explain as many of the finer details as I can. But first... The show begins with three teens, Adam, Kai, and Mira, waking up in an empty room with no memories of who they are or how they got there. As they explore, they soon find themselves in a weird world that's a hodgepodge of all kinds of impossible things. Also, each of them has a superpower of some kind. There's also this weird guy with purple skin who can magic them anything they need, only it'll apparently cost them something. <laughs> so many questions! You really have no clue, do you? Weird guy mentions that they're all here because they chose to be. A few episodes in, they run into three other kids who also have powers. Their names are Vanessa, Skeet, and Reeve. When they first meet, they act like friends, but the show hints to us that they're planning some kind of betrayal. We get more and more hints that the world they're in is a simulation of some kind. <laughs> he, he glitched. Like he wasn't real. Like he was digital or something. Adam floats the theory that they're in a video game. The other kids finally betray them, and they confirm that this is a game. A competition between two teams. Somehow they knew this, but the main characters didn't. Not long after that, Weird Guy shows up to warn them that the game's code is corrupt, and they need to get out as fast as possible. The three of them battle their way through a glitching game world until they beat the other team and get to the exit. They win, and wake up in Live Action World. We see that they're playing a virtual reality game show called The Hollow, and Weird Guy is the host. In a brief flashback, we see both teams choose their powers and enter the VR world that wipes their memory. The protagonists won, and they managed to end the game before the simulation collapsed and trapped their consciousnesses inside. They celebrate their victory, but as they leave, Kai notices a glitch in Vanessa's real-life body. On to Season 2. After winning the game, Adam, Kai, and Mira wake up in their homes. Except it's animated, so we know something's up. They find each other and set to work figuring out what happened. Now that everyone has their memories back, we can pick up some details about their personal lives from their conversations. All the kids are big fans of The Hollow. Adam, Mira, and Reeve were all old friends who had planned to be a team, but Reeve and Adam had a falling out, and Kai came in as a last minute replacement. They run into another team of kids, and spot Weird Guy, and it becomes clearer what's going on. This is a new game, with new contestants, that the old players have somehow glitched into. They run into Skeet, and when he hears about all this, he jumps to the conclusion that all they need to do to escape is to, uh, lose on purpose if you catch my drift. So he does, but he seems to die for real. After that, they meet up with Reeve and Vanessa, and reluctantly work together. Adam and Reeve bicker, while we keep seeing shots of Vanessa looking guilty. She eventually admits why. The game is glitching because she cheated. She hacked the Hollow to keep her memories in the game, and that caused all the glitches and problems that have been happening. They eventually find Weird Guy, who is shocked to see them. He thinks they're just computer code at first, but as they talk, he figures out what's going on. 
He admits to them that Hollow Games makes digital copies of every player to make a new life sim game. But the glitching transferred the real kids' memories into these copies, making them self-aware. Now there are two copies of each of the kids, the ones out in the physical world who finished the game and woke up, and these copies of their consciousnesses stuck in the digital world. There's no way for the digital kids to leave the Hollow, since their physical bodies are already occupied by their physical selves. So, Weird Guy heads off to the real world to disconnect the life sim and put it on its own separate server, so that the digital kids have a digital world to live out their lives in. Meanwhile, the kids stop the other Hollow team from winning to keep the world from resetting and deleting them. It's a close call, but they do it, and the five kids get a happily ever after in a digital copy of reality. Okay, so as far as mystery boxes go, this isn't too complicated. It's a cartoon for kids, not Westworld. By the end of the show, most things are pretty much squared away. Each season has a main overarching question that gets resolved by the end. In season one, it's what is this world that they're in? The answer, it's The Hollow, a virtual reality game that wipes your memory when you start playing. In season two, the question is, why is everyone still in The Hollow after the game ended? The answer, the game glitched and saved digital copies of their consciousnesses into the game. <laughs> why did I put that word in the script so many times? Consciousnesses, consciousnesses. 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 Now let's go over the finer points. What else do we know about the Hollow and Hollow Games? The company Hollow Games created the Hollow. It seems to be a game that you can play at home with a VR headset, but also, Hollow Games hosts a big televised competition in their studio with more advanced hardware. It seems like the name Hollow is a play on Hollow, as in hologram or holodeck. From some context clues, we can pick up the fact that this Hollow game is pretty new. We see a wall of winning teams, and there are only like five of them. Plus, Hollow Games Studio is walking distance from where the main characters live, and Hollow Top Champion Gretchen also lives in town, so the game's popularity seems to be pretty localized. It hasn't really gone worldwide yet, and they're still working out all the bugs. But the Hollow is only the first step in Hollow Games' plans. Their end goal is to create a simulated copy of the real world called Hollow Life, created by scanning the brains of every Hollow player without their knowledge or consent. This is where the first episode of Season 2 takes place. Everything here is constructed based on a player's memories. Note Adam's copy of Moby Dick that's blank because he never actually read it and the brain scan didn't have anything to put there. I mentioned Westworld as a joke, but it's the same thing Delos did in Season 2 of that show. Hollow Games created Hollow Life for profit-motivated reasons. People would pay big money for a perfectly accurate simulation of the real world. It's a commentary on big tech companies stealing your data. Okay, so if that's the Hollow, what do we know about the kids? All six of them grew up in the same town. Adam, Mira, and Reeve had all been friends since they were little, and so were Mira and Skeet. They were all huge Hollow fans and really wanted to win. Adam, Mira, and Reeve were supposed to be a team, but Adam and Reeve were two big personalities that kept clashing. Reeve overheard Adam considering kicking Reeve off the team and did a you can't fire me I quit kind of thing, even though Adam didn't actually want him to leave. Vanessa recruited him, and Mira brought in Kai, a friend of her little brothers, and that's how we got these two teams of three. Then what was the deal with Vanessa cheating and the glitch? Everyone thought it was impossible to cheat at the Hollow, but Vanessa wore a special contact lens that blocked the memory erasing program. That's why her eye glitched after she woke up. This theoretically would make the game super easy to win, because she would go in already knowing the objective, but her team lost anyway. Too bad, so sad. But her cheating caused the entire game to become unstable. That's why everything was glitching in Season 1. Judging by how worried Weird Guy, Gustav, was, we can be reasonably sure that this glitching created a die-in-the-game, die-for-real situation. Their, <laughs> their consciousnesses would get stuck in the game forever, and they would never wake up. The glitch also affected Hollow Life. Normally, all the digitally recreated people in Hollow Life are not sentient. Think of it like ChatGPT. They're really advanced computer programs that imitate the real person really well, but don't have thoughts of their own. But because Vanessa hacked the memory wiping, that caused the program to duplicate all the memories of the six contestants and save them to their Hollow Life avatars. These sentient avatars are the characters we follow in Season 2, while their physical selves woke up from the game and went on with their lives none the wiser. The avatars couldn't leave the game, but with the help of Gustav, they put Hollow Life onto its own server where they could live in peace. You might feel like this isn't a happy ending. The kids are all trapped in a virtual space forever. Everything around them is fake. These are just fake digital copies of their loved ones who aren't really sentient. Isn't that existentially horrifying? To leave your real life behind and live forever in a shallow imitation where nothing you do really matters and you can never leave? 
where time marches on in the outside world, and you just stay where you are, in a static, unchanging, cold, empty void. A hollow life. But it's all about perspective. The world looks and feels just like the one they left behind. And that's all that really matters. It's better than not living at all, anyway. And that's pretty much it. There are probably plot threads in there somewhere that would have been expanded on in future seasons, but we'll never know. The show was never that big, and the cancellation wasn't a huge surprise to anyone. The creators wrote a second season that functions fine as an ending if it wound up being the last season. I wish we could have gotten more, but I can't be too mad. Now, is this a good mystery box story? Number one, does it open with a big, obvious mystery? Yep, the kids wake up with no knowledge of where they are or who they are. Opening mysteries don't get much bigger than that. Then, that mystery spirals out into smaller questions, like where their powers came from, who Weird Guy is, or what the other team is planning, all of which weave together by the end when we come to understand that this is a video game. These mysteries are directly presented to the audience, with characters wondering about them out loud. Who are you? Where am I? Yeah, those are the top two questions. The show isn't very long, as I've already pointed out. As far as mystery box stories go, this is one of the smallest in scope that I know. I can see it working pretty well as Baby's first mystery box, presenting this storytelling structure in a simple way to someone for the first time. Considering how little mystery there is though, I'm really impressed at how well it's spread out through the whole show. The season 1 question of what this world is goes all the way to the last scene of the last episode, where it's finally confirmed that it's a video game. Then, right after that, we get the mysterious tease of Vanessa's eye, and then jump right in with a new related mystery in Season 2. Everything we see in the show is diegetic. It's all part of this virtual world the characters are in, as opposed to symbolic and metaphorical visuals that are up to interpretation. There is a clear and explicit answer for everything. The ending is a little too clean for my tastes. It's too simple. Everything is given such a thorough answer that there's nothing left to wonder about once the show is finished. A video like this explaining it is almost redundant, because if you're paying any attention, you get all the answers you could want from the show. I'm somewhat skeptical that the second season was planned back when the first season was written, but I think it worked out okay. Things flow well enough, and there are no awkward payoffs that feel forced. Finally, in terms of connecting the mysteries to the characters, this show nails it better than most. Most of the time, the kids are desperate to know what's going on. In almost every episode, they share their theories, and they have a whole range of emotional reactions to new information they discover. My reflection, it, it was reversed! What does that even mean? I think we might be in a parallel universe or something. While they're contending with any immediate danger, the three kids are being detectives along with the audience, which is the best way to get us invested in the mystery. As much as I love The Hollow, it's probably destined to become an obscure member of Netflix's back catalog. But I can't be too upset, it was always for a niche audience, and it could have been a lot worse. Netflix is famous for canceling shows, and part of why those cancellations hurt so much is that Netflix shows tend to be highly serialized. So the early seasons start these ongoing stories that get canceled on huge cliffhangers that never get resolved. At least The Hollow's creators saw the writing on the wall and had the foresight to write in a serviceable ending. I am ultimately very impressed with what they achieved here. The Hollow gets a final Mystery Box rating of 8 out of 10. So I have a theory. The three of us are dead, right? I have a theory. The three of us are dead, right? <laughs> Man, if I had a nickel. <laughs>